Hey, welcome to the channel. It's Jack, the muscle and mobility maker with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I'm gonna to be taking you through how to improve your hip external rotation. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. And it doesn't get better than that. So take advantage of it. Ready? Let's go ahead and dive into this one. All right, like I said, today we're gonna to be looking specifically at hip external rotation. So what we're gonna do is first of all, take a peek at how to test and really assess where your hip external rotation is. And then from there, I'm gonna give you some exercises that you can work on to actually go about improving that. So we'll be addressing the hip joint itself. We'll look at how the strength of that joint is around it. So some stability work, and we'll actually be doing some of that in combination together. So we can go ahead and really amplify that process and speed up the progress that you see in improving your hip external rotation. Ready? Let's go ahead and first of all, jump into how to test your hip external rotation and get a good idea where both sides stand. All right, we're gonna start with testing the hip external rotation first. So you just wanna place your ankle above your knee resting and use a yoga block or some form of measurement onto the outside here. Now I wanna make sure I keep my pelvis square to the ceiling so I'm not rotating my pelvis to get this rotation, but I wanna let that leg fall open as far as I can without letting my pelvis rotate. We're gonna test both sides, see if there's any imbalances and see where our range is. I like the yoga block because it's got various heights that I can measure with here. All right, now that we have a measurement of it, now we can move on to improving it. So here we're gonna start with a banded distraction at the hip. So I place my leg so the band is high up in the hip crease here. And I'm gonna bring that leg across my body so it's planted with my knee that's not banded up underneath the ankle there to support me some. My back is flat to the floor. I'm using my hand on that side to pin my foot down. And what I wanna do is flex into the band for about five seconds, actually bringing my knee toward my chest as much as possible. And then I'm gonna relax and allow the band to help pull me back open here into that external rotation of the hip. Now you're gonna feel some interesting pulls at first in this position. So just take your time, breathe through it, move slowly and just really settle into the position each time, allowing that to open a little bit further and a little bit further every time, letting the band do the pulling, not trying to actively do any work other than when you flex the knee toward your chest. From here, you can literally keep the band in the same position and move into this deep half kneeling position. What I wanna do is push my knee into internal rotation at the hip again here, and then fall into external rotation. So I'm going down my forearm, I'm actually pushing my knee open and prying it away from me while the band pulls at the hip. And I'm trying to rotate my torso and even my back leg toward that leg that's going into external rotation as much as possible here. So pressing into internal rotation and going back into external rotation and just going between those positions, working until we gain some more range of motion. Now the hand on the foot is trying to help that foot maintain some stability, a tripod base. So I do wanna make sure that I'm able to keep pretty good connection to the floor when I'm externally rotating because that's what transfers to your squats. All right, and one more with the band at the same position. We're going into a pigeon stretch here, but here I'm using the band for external feedback, and you'll see me actually flexing against the band and then relaxing and allowing the band to pull me back further into this externally rotated position. I do have my hand on my knee and also on my foot here to create a nice base to work off of. And if this is too much for you to begin with, we can also elevate this position, which I'm gonna show you here in a second. You could do it elevated without the band, you could do it elevated with the band and use that for the feedback as well. But here I'll show you without the band as another alternative. And you can use a bench, a couch, anything like that. So we'll move on to that here in one moment.
All right, so with a bench, the nice thing about it here, if it's adjustable, I can adjust the angle so it meets me where I'm at with my external rotation currently. What I wanna do is actually flex against the back of the bench and then lower myself in. So again, you could see how I could use the band here to help, but I also don't need that. You could also use, like I said, a couch and adapt the couch height for the knee with adding pillows under the knee. So if you're having trouble getting that angle of the leg, just add some pillows under it to start and then smash the pillows while you're working. And of course, as external rotation at your hip improves, you start to lower the height of that bench so it meets you where you're able to go. But the whole point here is that I'm actively engaging the musculature and then going into a passive position, allowing myself to get deeper and deeper into that external rotation each time. Nice thing about an armchair or a couch is that you can also assist yourself with the arms um, on the arms of the armchair as you're working. So that can be helpful as well. And lastly, coming all the way down to a flat bench or a flat surface altogether. This is still something that's a little bit modified where if we can get you down to the ground, that would be our next level to work at. So this is how we get you there. Just taking those steps little by little, opening up that external rotation as needed. Next, we're gonna do some loaded work here. So here I've got a kettlebell held in the goblet position. I'm 90-90 and I'm reaching my elbows out in front of my foot and my knee as I lean over that front hip and then come back up from there. So this is loading that hip once again and we can go passive toward the end of this. So you might do a few reps where you're active going over the leg and then coming back up and then go passive where you just set the elbows down and settle in and relax and breathe just allowing that stretch to take place once you've gone into the active movement another similar movement is the shin box it's a little bit less of an angle on the hips here so you might actually find this one a little bit easier to start with or you can use bands to help through this movement even if you don't have the strength to begin with to get those hips fully extended, you can start by sitting in this position with a load and holding it passively as well. And that alone will start to build some of the strength and resilience in those tissues that you need. From there, then you can start to work toward adding the full extension of the hips and being able to control that range of motion as you raise and lower back in. Lastly, we want to take advantage of reciprocal inhibition. So here we're going to open up our adductors. We're just going to load those adductors. I'm going to flex against them for five seconds here and then relax, allowing my knees to fall closer to the floor. Each time I gain more range of motion, I'm going to repeat that process. So I'm going to flex, relax, flex, relax till I've about maxed that full range of opening into external rotation here. I have my feet together. I have my uh, heels as close to my body as I can in this position and I'm using the wall to help maintain my posture and get me into a good position. Your knees might start really high but you probably have more range of motion that you're able to open up in this position than you even realize and that's where it can be helpful to have the load plus you'll also be resisting yourself with your own arms so you're kind of pressing the weight down against your push of the legs up so imagine squeezing those legs together and then giving way from the legs and allowing it to go passive. All right, and there you have it. How to go about assessing and improving your hip external rotation. If you like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share this one with a friend. Maybe you know they're working on improving their hip mobility. Share the love, pass it along their way. 
If you're somebody who is inhibited in your training currently because you have training aches or injuries that are holding you back from training the intensity that you like to or even need to, then what I want you to do right now is drop down below in the description to fill out a coaching application and schedule a mobility blueprint call. This will be our opportunity to jump on a Zoom call together so that I could first of all take you through a bit of an assessment, gather all the information I would need to tailor a program specific to your needs, and then from there, get you moving in the right direction with your mobility training so that you can resolve that problem in the next 12 weeks. So if that sounds good to you, go ahead, drop down below, fill out that coaching application, schedule that call, and we'll start moving in that direction. Last but not least, if you have not already, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine, and it does not get better than that. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. We'll see you next week.